respectable chairpersons and dear guests uh, for this presentation uh, I prepared uh, the basics of the uh, anatomy of the vulva and the inguinal femoral uh, area uh, as you know uh, here uh, genital system is divided into external and uh, internal genitalia in uh, both genders and uh, external genitalia uh, contains uh, mons pubis, labia maiora, labia minora, clitoris, uh, vestibule of vagina and certain glands and they are uh, totally referred as vulva so uh, we, uh, I will going to talk about all uh, these structures and uh, these structures are localized uh, under the urogenital diaphragm uh, behind the pubic symphysis uh, and uh, all these structures are placed uh, inside the anterior triangle of the perineal region or the urogenital triangle uh, here the mons pubis then we can see the labia maiora and uh, in between them we can see labia minora and the other, all other structures. First one is uh, mons pubis. Uh, it's a rounded uh, prominence uh, which is placed um, anterior spirit to the pubic symphysis and it contains uh, a mass of subcutaneous uh, fat tissue uh, and uh, below it or post behind it uh, we can see prominent folds of skin uh, which are known as labia uh, Mayora. Uh, actually, this is uh, critical because uh, it contains the termination of the round ligament of the uterus uh, here, and uh, outer surface is covered uh, by pubic hair after puberty. Uh, and uh, labia maiora, uh, both sides labia maiora unite uh, to form certain commissures, uh, folds here. This is the anterior uh, labial commissure here. Uh, it's uh, formed at the uh, anterior junction of the two labia maiora and here there is a, a posterior uh, labial commissure which is uh, formed by the uh, posterior junction of the two sides labia maiora and uh, in between the two uh, labia maiora uh, there are uh, a pair of uh, folds uh, known as labia minora they are fat free structures and they are formed by uh, main hairy skin uh, and uh, they bound the vestibule of the uh, vagina and the external orifice of the uh, urethra. Uh, here the uh, labia minora uh, form two lamina uh, at the anterior part. Uh, the medial uh, lamina of each side uh, unite to form the uh, frenulum of the clitoris here and the lateral lamina unite to form uh, the uh, propius of the uh, clitoris uh, and these are uh, in close relation with the glands uh, of clitoris and uh, clitoris is the erectile structure uh, which is located uh, at the anterior aspect of the labia minora and uh, this structure is composed of a pair of crura a body and a glands part uh, here we can see the placement of the uh, glands here and as I stated previously the propius and the frenulum of clitoris are shown here uh, and if we remove the skin and the uh, subcutaneous tissue we can see the uh, crura of the uh, clitoris uh, here uh, which are attached to the uh, ischiopubic rams on both sides and they uh, course anteriorly and unite with each other to form the uh, body of it. If we take a close look at this region we can see the formation of the body of clitoris and the final part glands is shown here. Uh, vestibule uh, is the space that contains the openings of the uh, vagina, uh, the ducts of the uh, greater and uh, lesser uh, vestibular glands and here we can see a thin fold of mucous membrane, uh, hemen, uh, in this part. Uh, here we can see the uh, openings of the uh, lesser vestibular uh, glands and here we can see the openings of the uh, greater vestibular glands uh, here uh, and the other structures uh, are the bulbs of the vestibule uh, actually they are paired masses uh, of erectile tissue lying on each side of the vaginal uh, orifice uh, and here uh, both of them are covered by the bulbospongiosus muscles and if we remove them we can see these uh, paired uh, structures uh, and 
here the placement of the uh, bulbs are uh, shown here and uh, at their posterior aspect we can see the placement of the greater vestibular glands or Bartholin's glands. Uh, and as I stated the uh, ducts of these uh, glands, uh, greater vestibular glands, uh, open on the each side of the vaginal uh, orifice and there are also uh, small uh, lesser vestibular glands which are known as scanus glands. Uh, here again the placement of the greater vestibular uh, glands uh, is shown on uh, one side. Uh, and also here the, again the placement of it and the, the, we can see the retinal, uh, urethral orifice and just below it or behind it we can see the openings of the lesser vestibular uh, glands. And for the inguinal femoral region, uh, actually uh, this region lies between uh, more or less between uh, anterior superior iliac spine and pubic crest or pubic symphysis. Uh, and uh, this place, uh, this part, the region uh, contains the lower parts of the anterior lateral abdominal wall and the upper parts of the thigh region. Uh, and here the most prominent structure here is the uh, inguinal ligament, uh, which is formed by the uh, aponeurosis of the external uh, abdominal, uh, external oblique abdominal muscle and uh, it's a quite um, important reference structure uh, for this region uh, and in addition to that this region contains uh, some part of the uh, inguinal canal some part of the femoral uh, triangle uh, femoral uh, canal and the femoral triangle here uh, and uh, this region uh, contains uh, multiple layers uh, from inside to outside peritoneum the inner mo uh, extraperitoneal fat and various uh, muscle groups, uh, subcutaneous fats, uh, superficial fascia and skin. And uh, here uh, among the muscles, uh, external and internal oblique muscles, transverse abdominis muscle and on midline uh, there is rectus abdominis muscle uh, which contribute to formation of this uh, part. Here uh, on this figure uh, we can see the uh, skin here and removed, uh, the skin is removed actually and below it the superficial fascia, uh, campus fascia which contain the uh, fatty tissue but fat is also removed here and below it, uh, be, uh, deep to it, uh, the deep fascia uh, partly uh, visible here and here on this part we can see the aponeurosis of the uh, external oblique muscle uh, and uh, in addition to that here uh, we can see the uh, round ligament of uterus and its coverings here uh, and the uh, inguinal ligament is also visible on this part and below the inguinal ligament we can see the uh, cribriform uh, fascia of the uh, fascia lata. You know fascia lata is the deep fascia of the thigh and uh, it, at the upper parts of the thigh uh, there is a cribriform part which contains openings on it uh, just below the inguinal ligament. This side is uh, critical because uh, this side is the contains the termination of the great saphenous vein uh, and also several superficial vessels both arteries and veins are present here uh, and in addition to these vessels uh, there are uh, too many lymph nodes uh, mainly the uh, superficial inguinal lymph, no lymph nodes are placed uh, along the uh, termination of this uh, great saphenous vein and uh, if we move a little bit deep, if we move the uh, fascia lata, uh, we can expose the uh, uh, femoral vein and also we can expose the deep inguinal uh, lymph nodes here. Uh, this region, the uh, uh, vulva, uh, vulva uh, is mainly supplied by the branches of the external pudendal artery and the internal pudendal artery. Uh, and there are accompanying veins which mostly uh, drain into the internal pudendal vein but uh, so, uh, the veins which uh, accompany the external pudendal artery finally drain into the uh, great saphenous vein or the uh, femoral vein. Here on this figure uh, we can see uh, the uh, branches of the uh, internal uh, pudendal artery here. Uh, you know internal pudendal artery is a branch of uh, internal uh, iliac artery and here uh, 
in order to reach the perineal region, it courses in the iliac fossa, uh, and inside this fossa it uh, passes through a, a canal. This is the Alcox canal, and uh, during its course inside the uh, uh, ischial fossa, it gives off its branches. Here it gives off a uh, uh, it gives off the inferior rectal artery to supply the anal region and then it courses anteriorly in order to give its uh, further uh, uh, branches. Uh, it supplies the, uh, this artery supplies almost all structures of the uh, urogenital uh, triangle including this urogenital diaphragm, these muscles and course anteriorly. Uh, it gives off its uh, dorsal artery of uh, clitoris and deep artery of clitoris uh, and also it gives off the, well, uh, a deep branch to supply uh, the deeper uh, perineal pouch. Uh, here uh, this figure uh, shows the uh, external pudendal artery. Here external pudendal artery is a branch of uh, femoral artery uh, and just below the inguinal ligament it uh, gives off this branch and uh, external pudendal artery courses towards midline to supply the anterior aspects of the uh, vulva. Uh, and furthermore, uh, in this region, uh, femoral artery gives off several more branches. One of them is uh, the uh, circumflex, uh, superficial circumflex iliac uh, branch to supply the lateral aspects of the uh, inguinal region and it gives of a, a, a superficial epigastric branch to supply the lower parts of the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, here the uh, superficial circumflex iliac branch, external pudendal branch uh, is shown here. Uh, and here this figure uh, illustrates the uh, course of the internal pudendal artery. As I stated, it uh, arises from the uh, internal iliac artery and um, courses towards the uh, ischial fossa. And meanwhile, uh, first it leaves the pelvic cavity and then enters into the iliac fossa. Anyway, for the lymphatics, uh, most of the lymphatics uh, drain into the superficial inguinal uh, lymph nodes, uh, which are, these lymph nodes are placed uh, uh, along the uh, terminal uh, part of the uh, great saphenous vein, as I stated previously, and uh, they uh, are found inside the superficial fascia of the uh, thigh region. Uh, and these uh, lymph nodes drain into the external iliac lymph nodes and partly to deep iliac uh, inguinal lymph nodes uh, as they pass through the cribriform fascia. And uh, an important, uh, maybe important, but uh, for the classification, uh, I think there are several more classifications, uh, but uh, here I present the superamedial, superolateral, inframedial, infralateral, and the central group. Uh, here we can see the placement of the uh, superamedial uh, group here and the superlateral group uh, is uh, placed uh, around here and here we can see the, uh, sorry, uh, inferolateral group around here. Uh, and the superficial ingun lymph nodes mainly receive drainage from the superlateral uterus, prepuce of clitoris, vulva and ostium of the uh, vagina uh, here. Uh, and after they receive these structures, lymphatics, uh, they drain into the uh, deep uh, inguinal lymph nodes which are placed deep to the fascia lata and then they finally drain into the external iliac uh, uh, lymph nodes. Uh, And uh, in addition to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, deep inguinal lymph nodes further uh, receive the uh, lymph of the glands of the clitoris. Uh, and here again we can see the 
here the superficial uh, inguinal lymph nodes and here on this side, on the opposite side here, we can see the femoral artery and around it we can see the uh, deep inguinal lymph nodes. Uh, one of these lymph nodes are uh, placed inside the femoral canal. It's also known as, uh, it's placed at the entrance of the uh, uh, femoral uh, canal and known as the cloquettes lymph node, somewhere around here. Uh, and uh, here we can see the placement of the external iliac lymph nodes around the external iliac way. For the innervation, uh, actually the uh, pudendal nerve supplies most of the structures, but in addition to the pudendal nerve, the leoinguinal nerve and the gentle branch of the gentofemoral nerve also uh, supply this region in terms of uh, sensation, uh, the anterior aspects. And the perineal branches of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh also uh, contributes to the uh, innervation. Here let me show uh, the course of the pudendal nerve here. Uh, pudendal nerve courses together with the internal pudendal uh, vessels and uh, this uh, is the main nerve to supply the uh, muscles in the perineal region. So it's uh, uh, motor, uh, it provides motor innervation to the almost all muscles here, to the anal canal, uh, superficial and deep transverse perineal muscles, uh, ischiocavernous and bulbospongiose muscles are also supplied by the motor parts of the pudendal nerve. And in addition to that, uh, it gives off uh, s uh, several um, sensory branches to supply the uh, perineal region. Uh, here we can see the deep branch, uh, deep branch uh, mainly uh, contains motor fibers and here we can see a superficial branch uh, which uh, contains both motor and sensory uh, nerve fibers. And here uh, we can see the uh, ischial tuberosity here. Uh, this is uh, a reference point uh, to uh, uh, in order to uh, find the placement of the uh, pudendal nerve, uh, a very prominent uh, nerve uh, structure here. And here on the lateral aspect, here uh, we can see the uh, uh, perineal branch of the posterior uh, femoral cutaneous nerve, uh, which also contributes to uh, sensory innervation of this area. And I would like to thank you for your patience, and if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer them.